Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pittsburgh Current Podcast. I am Pittsburgh uh, Current Editor, and I forgot my name there for a second, my editor and publisher, Charlie Deach. Um, this is, um, our year is, uh, is obviously, it's winding down, and um, I actually gave it some thought the other day that uh, this has been quite a year for, uh, for a lot of people. For myself, um, it's definitely been... Uh, a year of, um, of ups and downs and goods and bads. And, um, a lot of the bads that I thought were the thought of things I thought were bads turned out to be good. So, um, check out the Pittsburgh current. We'll have our final issue of the year, uh, coming up on Tuesday and it will be a year in review. Plus we'll um, be looking at, uh, at some of the, obviously the music and, uh, music and arts uh, shows and entertainment that's going to be going on over the next few weeks. And then we will be our, we will not publish another again until January 8th. And that will uh, be our special winter guide. So be sure to check that out for everything to do this winter. Um, a podcasting note next Thursday will be our last, uh, it, our last podcast of the year. And then we will be back the first Thursday in January. I'm getting the yes on that. And uh, next week, I already know, we'll be talking about First Night with uh, with the Pittsburgh Culture Trust. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So today's show, um, it, actually, that was supposed to be this week's show, to be honest with you. And then some things, uh, we're, I got some information where we've been, you know, this is, we did our giving guide, if you remember, right before Thanksgiving. And um, one of the stories we had in there was about giving to LGBTQ Charities, as you all know, Sue Kerr, who was on the show last week, um, Sue wrote a story about LGBTQ uh, groups to give to, um, and so then I got a call from her um, earlier this week, and I will say, you know, from from talking to people, it, it, it's difficult to fundraise anyway. This time of the year might make it a little easier because people are more willing to give around the holidays, but. LGBTQ organizations, you know, they're not only out there fundraising and, you know, it's difficult just to fundraise. And then you're, you're, you're fundraising for organizations that some people have, unfortunately, a really horrible reaction to. So it can make fundraising even tougher. So Sue told me about a situation involving the Prasad Center and Garden of Peace. Um, for those that don't know, Prasad Center, um, is is one of the city's um, stalwart uh, LGBTQ organizations, and what they do is they have a drop-in center in which LGBTQ youth can come in, especially particularly those who are housing insecure um, or or homeless, and they can get showers, do laundry, um, and every year they have a holiday party for these folks, um, for these kids, and the kids are allowed to make one wish. They write down, uh, you know, one wish, and then the Prasad Center goes out to find um, information or goes out to find donors to pay for this stuff. Um, and you can read about this on our website. I put a story up this morning on uh, PittsburghCurrent.com. Um, so you can, you can check that out. Um, and there's another, another group called Garden of Peace and Garden of Peace uh, is, was founded by, um, by uh, Michael David Battle and they work with primarily trans and queer uh, uh, trans and queer people of color, a youth of color. And, um, uh, and they, when you're talking about, I guess, subsets within subsets, um, you know, 120% of LGBTQ youth, as, as I wrote this morning in my story, um, are at a greater risk to become homeless. Um, 72% of black LGBTQ individuals, uh, face housing insecurity. And a lot of this is because, um, you know, they're, they don't have a safe space at home or they are, or they are kicked out of their homes or they're disowned by their families. And so, um, what these organizations do is they tried that now don't get me wrong. They're working all year round, but at the holidays, you know, look, everybody loves the holidays. Everybody, you know, it's, it's nice to say it's nice to give, you know, to, to give and to receive, it's better to give than receive, but it's also nice to receive, especially when your life is, you know, in a bit of an upheaval. Um, so the Prasad Center on Tuesday night, they had their, um, holiday party and on December 23rd, Gardens of Peace will be having their holiday party. Now they, they, they usually spend their time right up into their events fundraising. Um, so Sue mentioned to me that that these 
that she was trying to, she was doing some fundraising for some of these organizations. And Sue's very, very active in these, in, in fundraising and, and helping to get um, the funds necessary. So she tells me that um, when she called this particular person um, and she said, you know, she was hoping to maybe get 50, a hundred dollars, something like that to, to maybe buy a few gifts. Uh, the gentleman, um, who you probably know, uh, F doc Harris, um, self-proclaimed lawyer and donut salesman at super bakery. And of course, you know, son of Steelers, great Franco Harris. Uh, he not only decided to donate, he decided to donate at all. He basically kicked in, uh, all the money for Persad, who again, just had their, uh, just had their party. And he, um, also, uh, paid so everyone, every 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 individual in the Garden of Peace program as well could have their wish for the holidays. And so, um, like I said, we have a story up on PittsburghCurrent.com. dot uh, com. We I talked to um, the folks at those agencies, and they are they were pretty flabbergasted when they heard the news. And so, joining us on the podcast uh, live from the airport, he's uh, heading out of town. So we got him for a few minutes here, but is doc Harris doc. Thanks for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Great to be here. Thank you. So doc, um, tell me, talk to me a little bit, but I know that Sue Kerr reached out to you. Um, what was it about these particular, these particular nonprofits, these particular charities that made uh, for LGBTQ youth? What, what was it about these that made you decide to, to, kind of you know give enough so just just to handle their issues you know so as one as, as one individual Mike David Michael or Michael David Battle told me usually this time of year we're trying to figure out how to pay for our dinner and now all we have to concentrate on is actually planning it and, and putting on a nice affair for the kids so what was it about this that uh, made you decide to give so generously well you know Charlie you watch what has been happening this entire year where from the top down from the White House down there's been this growth of hate yeah. across America. It's, it, it, it's terrifying. It's going after every single minority or at-risk group in America, just coming nonstop. And at some point, you have to sit down and say, hey, you know, I can't do much, but what can I do? Right. And Sue you know, reached out, and I've known Sue for 10 years, and she's been such an amazing leader, um, a, really, a really good connector, too, bringing people together. Um, and said, said, look at these charities. And I said, you know what? I've been very blessed this year. Let's take care of it. Wow. When that was, I think you surprised, you surprised a lot of people, but, um, if, you know, it shouldn't come really as a surprise. Your family has been, um, you know, your dad going back years and years and years and years, your parents have, they've not only been financially active in the community giving to causes, they've also been, you know, giving of their time. And I think that your you as well, your family has been, has been sort of very generous with its time. Is that something that you grew up with, a, a mindset that, that, that you grew up with in giving back to the community? Oh, absolutely. My mother and father have done an amazing job, not only as parents to me, but really as citizens in this city, in this country. Um, the quality of make sure to give at all times. You know, when, when you're granted something great, help others with that. Uh, that's been ingrained in me pretty much since day one. Uh, my mom and my dad have really lived that. Yeah. for a long time and they've been very involved and it's a great it's a great example you know like i said i've been very very blessed uh doc is it something when we're talking about lgbtq community um is this something that, that you specifically have noticed you know and again just from from you know folks you may know and also you know as you said watching the news and watching what's going on in this country um is it is it such that, that i mean you've noticed pretty clearly the kind of the gaps in services and the gaps in, in, in how these communities are, um, you know, how these communities are cared for as opposed, as opposed to some others. Well, you know, it, it hits you especially, especially during the holidays. Yeah. Um, young members of the LGBTQ community, oftentimes ending up, like you said, you know, with housing insecurity or homelessness because their own families can't accept who they are. And at this time of the year, put them out. Yeah. And that is so just reprehensible to me. I mean, especially during the holidays here. And, you know, I'm not really a big holiday buff, but somehow this year kind of got me. Yeah. Because there's been just so much negativity and so much hate this year. That maybe it's a time to, you know, kind of reach out and say, hey, how can we help other people who are in a bad situation through no fault of their own because this hate is growing and fermenting? So take a stand, you know, and try to get back in a way that can help the people who really are the most at risk. Do you, um, how do we, how do we, how do we raise awareness, um, you know, um, 
in you know, look, I'm a I'm a, I'm a white cisgendered heterosexual male. Um, you're a, a cisgendered heterosexual male. How do how do how do we kind of get the word out? Like, I, I mean, these issues exist. I know about these issues. You know about these issues. But how do we sort of affect people in the affluent communities? Sort of to kind of open their eyes to the issues that that these folks face and uh, the help that they need. What is our I mean, responsibility? I, I guess. I mean, I. I I really feel that this is something that has to be done on a personal level. Yeah. You know, where you have to go out and bring people who might not have experienced this growing up or in their everyday lives and saying, hey, look, here's a human being that you can connect with. Let's help. It's not just an arm's length, you know, stop with the labels and stop with the naming thing. Yeah. Here's a friend of mine. They need help. Right. And my friend has introduced me to a bunch of people who need help and we have the ability to do it. So let's do it. Yeah. It's not about you know, naming rights on some senator or like getting, you know, some kind of fame or I'm the director of this board, but rather just if you have money in your pocket and don't need it, go ahead, help someone else who does. Absolutely. And, and just a, a couple more questions. Cause we know you got it. We know you got a plane to catch. Um, uh, growing up, um, was, were, were, were you, were you made aware of, and were you always, I, I assume tolerance was something that was taught in your, in your, in your household. So, um, was, 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 Dealing with, or, or, or I guess, knowing about LGBTQ people as again as you're growing up, was the tolerance level taught in your household? Um, uh, oh, ab- absolutely. Yeah. I grew up in the Mexican War Streets. Yeah. Uh, you know, born in '79, lived there throughout the '80s. The, mid- the early '90s got a little rough with uh, the crack epidemic in Pittsburgh, but before that, that community was the most inclusive and wonderful I've ever seen. Yeah. Everyone up and down on the streets, sitting on their stoops, having a beer. Uh, Straight couples, white couples, black couples, interracial couples, yeah. gay couples, lesbian couples, professionals, everybody just talking to one another, going to one another's houses, playing board games. Like that's how I grew up. Yeah. You know, and it was really amazing and it was inclusive. And it was kind of that beautiful period of 80s American city before things got bad again. Yeah. You know, and it, I, I grew up in a very inclusive community. And, you know, those people, you know, these people around me, all rubbed off and like, you know, help me understand that people are different and people are wonderful and celebrate those differences. Okay. Um, and finally, I have to ask you because, you know, because I'm, <laughs> cause I'm a Steelers fan and I'm a Yinzer. What was it like in the Harris household growing up around the holidays? What were some of the traditions that you guys had? Well, obviously, uh, December 23rd is Immaculate Reception Day. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Do you guys put up a special tree for that? Uh, well, it's funny. My, my mom's side of the family is uh, Serbian Orthodox. Yeah. So we do Christmas January 7th, and my dad's side is Italian Catholic. So that is December 25th. So I've always had two weeks of Christmas right. growing up. Uh, so that's kind of wonderful. So, you know, every year now it's nice. My dad throws a little event, gets the guys back together, celebrate the back of the reception. That's a great. Turn around to the Steelers and the lead into the best franchise in football history. Exactly. You know, but wow. it was nice having a bunch of, uh, bunch of uncles growing up who were all uh, <laughs> Hall of Famers. And, Amazing athletes. That's that's amazing. Yeah, I guess. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, Immaculate Reception Day is probably has got to be right up there on the on the Harris holiday list. So it's uh, that's pretty amazing. You know, it was, it was again. You know, I say the word blessed a lot, but growing up with those guys and hearing those stories. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable, and the fact that really the majority of them committed to staying in Pittsburgh, staying yeah. active, you know, staying part of the community is unlike anything else ever. Yeah. And that's what, that's the amazing part. I mean, you know, again, like I said, your, your parents were, your parents have been amazing to this community. And again, they could have went anywhere after, after your dad was finished playing football. So it's, I think it's great, especially back then. A lot of those players who were, you know, mostly most of those players were for the most part, one team guys, you know, that they decided to stay in the city. And I think, I think that that's, 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 that's a great, that's been a great legacy of for the city as well. When you have these individuals and you have these individuals who have these philanthropic tendencies who, you know, who sort of, you know, made their fortunes here, got well here, and then they, they stayed to give back. And I think that that's, uh, I think that, I think that's really amazing. Absolutely. And it was, you know, a lot of, a lot of leadership guys who came from all over this country and really just settled on Pittsburgh. And I think that's a lot of the reason that Pittsburgh Steelers fans identify so closely with the team is, you know, the, the older, older generation watching that and these guys stayed and they're part of the community. And that's really unlike, I would say, almost anything else in professional sports. Absolutely. Thank Doc Harris, thank you so much, um, not only for coming in here today, but uh, or for coming on today, but also for 
the really generous donation. You can follow Doc Harris at Father Doc on Twitter and um, Super Bakery is the family business has been around forever. And like I said, uh, I, the fact that you identify as lawyer and donut salesman is one of my favorite things ever. So, okay, so have you ever had a Super Donut? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, they're pretty good stuff. They're they're, pretty they're stuff. they are they're really good. And um yeah, that again another part another part of uh sort of Pittsburgh history there is just, it's super donuts. So Doc Harris, thank you so much. Uh have a safe flight and uh, have a happy holiday. Have a great holiday, Charlie. Thank you right, so much. Thank you. Take care. That was Doc Harris, the son of former Pittsburgh Steeler Franco Harris. Um and again, these there are uh, ample opportunities to um ample opportunities to give. And so for those of you, I know Sue Kerr was on last week. For those of you that don't know um, Sue Kerr, if you ask Sue for, you know, maybe a couple of other, you say, hey, Sue, do you have a couple of other things that, you know, people might want to give to? I have a large list here, but we're going to, we're just going to run through real quick a few of these and you can find out um, a lot. Of, you can find more about these agencies and more about the, um, the, the, the needs for the holidays at Sue's website, Pittsburgh Lesbian Correspondence, and it is lesbianpgh.com um so really quick um gift cards are in need um for uh, older lgbtq folks at the Prasad center um they're looking for 100 dollars giant eagle gift cards um looking for you know some more of that they're looking for 20 they need 23 backpacks filled with supplies for trans neighbors um, who will be attending the Garden of Peace holiday meals we were talking about on December 23rd. Um, you can donate the filled backpack or some of the supplies. And again, you can find out all the details on how to give on Sue's website. Um, True Tea Entertainment is looking for 50, uh, 50 gently used winter coats. So if you have a coat that uh, you no longer use or um, you uh, just want to give it to someone in need, um, they could use that there. And 30, 30 gift cards are needed for Sisters PGH um, in any amount for things like groceries, affordable meals, personal care products, um, and retailers along bus lines, which is very important. A lot of, a lot of city folks, you know, they, they, you know, they, they live along the bus lines and particularly, again, a lot of folks who, um, you know, who find themselves in need of social services. A lot of them also live along bus lines. Um, and just a few tips from Sue. She encourages gift cards to spaces like Starbucks and Target, um, because they are companies that, uh, are, do embrace LGBTQ community and, they're also, again, on the bus line and they are, they are, um, they are easily, uh, accessible, um, financial donations, always welcome. And again, you can find all of that on Sue's website. Um, so yeah, so please make sure, uh, you check that out. And, and again, we've focused a lot on LGBTQ youth. And again, because these are places that have a difficult time, um, getting the, the stuff they need, but just, you know, just find, um, just give, um, I know that, uh, and the deadline on some of these is getting down, but, um, every year, uh, my wife and I sort of, uh, adopt a kid for Christmas and, and, you know, and, and again, it's a very specific sort of wish list and some places call them angel trees and things like that. So, um, you know, make it personal, you know, find somebody who reminds you, you know, if you do something like that, find somebody who reminds you of yourself, uh, plucky young journalist looking to start his own newspaper. I look for those and uh, try and get them lots of pens and paper and so forth. So, um, yeah, well, so listen, I think this is going to be a rather short issue of the Pittsburgh current podcast. Um, you can check us out online at pittsburghcurrent.com. You can check us on all the socials at PGH current at PGH Current, no dot com there necessary. And again, our last uh, issue of the year will come out on Tuesday. That is the 18th of November, 18th of December. And um, our last podcast of the year will be next Thursday. And then we will see you back here after the first of the year. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in. And like I said, uh, you can find uh, details on on where to give on our website, pittsburghcurrent.com, and particularly LGBTQ youth. Uh, you can find those details on, uh, on lesbianpgh.com. Have a great week and happy holidays. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. 
Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.